Hi guys, it's challenge number 5 and we're making a Viking axe. I decided to go with lost wax casting to make an axe head and I grabbed a lump of wax and headed over to the bandsaw. Initially I just wanted to cut out a simple block I could work with. With that sawn it was over to the drill press to bore out a hole for the handle. I'd drawn out a design based on historical examples that I'd found and this made a nice template to work from. The bandsaw is a great way to remove the bulk of the material. I'd never had a go at carving wax before and I don't have any specialised tools but I found a blade from a utility knife shaved the wax nicely and it was easy to whittle away a basic shape. Some waxes can be sanded like wood but this one was slightly too soft but it did respond well to wet sanding. This enabled me to get a beautifully smooth finish. Whilst I was browsing the web for inspiration, I came across this axe design and I loved it, but it was way beyond my skill level. However, I was able to scratch out a similar pattern in the wax. To be honest, I didn't record myself doing this as I wasn't 100% sure what I was doing. But basically, I ground away the end of a small bolt to make a crude engraving tool. From there, it's just a matter of pushing the tool around the wax to draw out shapes. Now, I did a fairly novice job of this, so I won't deny for a second that it takes a lot of practice and skill to do this well. I fixed the wax onto a flat piece of plastic with a crude wax sprue and over this a stainless steel tube is placed. This cylinder was an inch or so too short so I extended it on a temporary basis with a couple of food cans. It did the trick. I used plasticine to seal the bottom edge and then I mixed up some investment plaster according to the manufacturer's instructions. This was poured in, vacuumed and allowed to sit for a couple of hours. The investment plaster needs to be cooked and the wax needs to be melted away to leave an axe head shaped void. This I did in my homemade electric foundry according to the manufacturer's guidelines. As I don't have room in my foundry for the cylinder and the crucible, I removed the plaster and got melting metal. When everything was ready, I placed the steel tube on top of my homemade vacuum rig and I removed the crucible from my electric foundry. In the background, my son Michael was already pumping away on my homemade pump, creating a nice vacuum ready for the pour. A couple of minutes later, once the metal had solidified, I carefully dunked the steel tube into a bucket of cold water. After a couple of minutes swilling around, the axe head was revealed and it wasn't too bad. 
the plane side had picked up a nasty bulge which could thankfully be ground away. And the pattern side had come out beautifully. Thankfully very little grinding was necessary, but some wet sanding with gradually finer grades of paper helped to remove any grinding marks and polish the metal. Finally a polishing wheel really brought out the shine. For a handle I took a piece of hardwood dowel. I cut this to length and run a slit on each end using the bandsaw. At the bottom of the handle I tapped in a long wedge to widen it, improving the grip. I also used a wedge at the top to secure the axe head in place. Before the reveal, don't forget this is a challenge guys. My fellow YouTubers Big Stack D and Art by Adrock have also made videos. So head over to their channels and see what they've done. It's always good to compare styles and techniques. So after a bit of wood stain on the handle and a little paint in the engraved recesses on the head, here it is. And I'm really quite pleased with it. Lost wax casting is a great way to pull out lots of details. If I'd have kept the plaster and the metal at the same temperature, which is the recommended technique, I think I would have had a perfect cast without any need for grinding at all. But that requires a second oven. However, I'm still pleased with the result. Whilst it's not historically accurate, which it was never really meant to be, I'd like to think it's certainly something a Viking would recognise as an axe. The handle is much shorter than he'd be used to, but the head shape and the slightly forward tilt of the head is certainly fairly accurate and matches real examples that I've seen. So I hope you've enjoyed this one guys, and if you did, please like it. Subscribe if you haven't already done so, and check out my other videos on my YouTube channel. Whee! Most importantly, don't forget to head over to the other challengers videos and see what they've been up to. So that's it for now guys, take care and thanks for watching.